Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. So this is the point that the plant right there, my uh, yellow squash, has been struggling for seven days. You do want to go in and check, and I check the stem. It's not a vine borer. You know, the fruit's falling off. It's just not thriving. It was a little bit smaller than this plant about seven days ago. At this point, what you do is you rip it out and you replace it. There's no point in trying to manage a struggling plant, especially if you can't find a problem. So this will be pulled out. I have a zucchini transplant that will be put in there. I know that it's difficult, but there's no point in going past five, seven, maybe 10 days trying to save a struggling plant because a new transplant, even if you put seeds in, will surpass this struggling plant. You know, we could try and do some different things. I fed it, I watered it, I inspected it, but it's just not worth keeping. The whole goal is to keep a production going in your garden of different, you know, fruits and vegetables. So just as an example, over here, those are some winter squash and they were very small and they were put in about the time that plant started struggling. And you can see how nice it looks. When the plants start taking off, they're gonna almost double, even triple weekly, when the soil temperature really warms up. So, let's replace this plant. I'll talk about some tips in getting a new squash zucchini plant going. So this is the difficult part, I understand. We're going to just rip out the plant. We're gonna inspect the roots, and we're gonna to look to see if there's any kind of maggots or anything in here that look strange. And besides from some perlite, it looks okay. I'm also going to take my knife, I'm going to cut into the stem, and look, there's no vine borer in there. You know, I just don't know what was ailing this plant. I know that it's harsh, but you can spend a lot of time trying to get that plant back to health, and seeds that you put in, or new transplants that you put in, will surpass that plant and produce so much better, and that's really the goal. A lot of times, what I do is I start transplants in uh, cups, just put them in a shadier part or around the shadier part of your house. They don't need to be sitting in the full summer sun and just let them grow. Grow a couple backups. You may not need them, but most of the time with squash, zucchini, something happens that you need them. Now, I always put in two seeds. If they both show up, you really want to remove one. I would plant this whole thing and then cut off the weakest one. However, if you want to try and get two plants out of here, if you take a serrated knife and you gently don't cut along the stem, but right in between them and just gently cut your way down, you can possibly save both of them. I don't recommend this if you know you don't really want to give it a try but they will be okay. So now I'm gonna have two zucchini plant going in. In this space, just one plant, it will take over this whole entire space. And you don't wanna crowd them together because it's gonna be hard to manage pests and disease. This soil is really soft. It's been well prepared, and I'm just gonna dig a hole, use my hand. If you wanted any organic granular fertilizer, about a tablespoon or two thrown into here, and then you would just mix it through. You'd never want your plant sitting on an organic granular fertilizer, or any fertilizer for that matter. And I am just loosening up that whole area. Drop in the plant. Let me pinch this off, it broke. You want to plant right to the level, right about there. Squash and zucchini plant will grow roots out of the stems. If you need a little more soil, just grab it from the surrounding area and then press it in. That already <laughs> looks healthier. I guarantee in June, July, when the soil is 60, 70 degrees, the soil temp, and it's warm, these plants just take off and accelerate. So definitely replace, you know, you wanna rip it out and you wanna replace it. Let me show you where I dropped some seeds because you could also do the same thing and you do wanna look through the soil. I don't see any kind of problems in the soil so I think this this space is good to go you would drop in three seeds just right in there and you would you know thin it to the strongest plant let me just show you real quick some seeds I put in about six days ago because they germinate so quickly and I don't want people waiting around trying to save struggling plants I know that it's difficult it was difficult yanking that squash plant out but you got to do it 
Over in that section is where I planted the zucchini plant and then I have a series going on here for really gardening on a budget. If you want to subscribe and follow I'll show you how the plants do here. I have beans, tomatoes and that's uh, zucchini. Also I'll show you how that plant is doing over the next week um, if you want to subscribe. So that is zucchini. They were put in I believe six days ago. They're already up one of the seeds didn't come up. I'll let these grow for another week or so, thin the weakest one, and my zucchini plant will be looking good. You have plenty of time, even if you haven't started squash and zucchini, to get them into the ground. And you can plant the seeds in June, early July, later July, even August, because they're gonna just grow so quickly. As long as you have 40 days from germination, before a frost shows up, you're going to get great production from your squash and zucchini plant. A lot of people just kind of plant it end of May, beginning of June. They fight a struggling plant. They get frustrated. They don't grow it anymore. So keep planting squash and zucchini throughout the summer. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and please subscribe. I'll show you how to grow a vegetable garden. Thanks for watching.